Hi everyone, welcome to the channel and my name is Manish Tiwari. In today's video, we are going to talk about CI-CD part and we will understand how can you design a CI-CD for your application. So basically what we are going to uh, understand here and what we are going to learn here, how to design a CI-CD pipeline for your microservice with real world DevOps example. So we will go beyond the basics. We will understand each and everything, the component, what we are going to utilize and how we can design. Correct. So what happens when you are working with the monolithic application? That means you do have one code base, you have one pipeline, you have one deployment. So you just developed your code, you pushed it and you directly deployed it. And that's all. So that's a kind of monolithic application. Today, today each and every organization is utilizing or they are on microservice architecture so for each and every functionality you see on your any of the website on your platform you see there are different services correct all these different services are coming through different different microservices considering a simple uh, e-commerce application whatever the e-commerce application you might be referring either amazon or the flipkart or any other e-commerce platform you are referring to so you see that there is a profile uh, for each and every registration, you register your details and you get a profile for yourself. You see that there are order section, there are card section. Whenever you select some items, you add it in the card. Then you see that's a card service. Then when you place an order, you get that there's an order service. When you are going to do checkout, you get the checkout service. And then when you are going for the payment, you are seeing that there is a payment service too. So for each and every functionality, you see there are multiple services all these services their functionality are handled through different microservices in real world so it's not a single code base when you talk about the uh, microservice architecture each and every functionality is coming through different microservices so what happens in monolithic application you have one code base one pipeline one deployment and that's all but when it comes to the microservice architecture there are considering simple number 10 to 15 different services like payment, authentication, notification, your uh, card system, order system, profile system and other scheduler, SLA, microservice. There are different kind of microservice can be there. For each and every microservice, there is a separate GitHub repository as well. It can be one project within the same project. It can be different, different microservice uh, level repo. Correct. Each and every microservice is being developed by either another team or the different sets of developers. So two developers might work on one microservice development, three developers might work on different uh, microservice development. So a team is working on that particular development, correct? So each and every microservice has their own repo, their own build process, their own deployment process, correct? It's going all individually. So in monolithic application, each and everything is being developed at one time and it is being deployed. Here, each and every microservice is now being developed by different different developers and it will be pushed at, at the different different time and then it will be deployed. So you have to make the things consistent. That means each and every functionality when as a end user, I will log in into application. I do not care whether it's the one microservice or there are 200 number of microservices. If I try to log in, it should be able to log in. When I get into the order system, I should be able to see what all items I have ordered. When I'm going for the payment thing, I should be able to make a seamless payment, correct, without any kind of disruption. So for me, it should work all fine. That means all the microservice functionality, all the microservice feature should work all together. So that's the part of microservice architecture. Correct? So now let's understand the things. So what we do, we go with each and every microservice repository. We develop the pipeline, the Jenkins pipeline, you can see for the CI purpose, the continuous integration where each and every microservice developer, they will develop the code, they will push it and it will be integrated in that particular repository. So for each and every microservice, you are going to develop your Docker file, you are going to develop your Jenkins file or GitHub Action file, whatever you are utilizing. So you can go with the simple example of Jenkins that for each and every repository, you have one Docker file and you have one Jenkins file as well. What will happen? The moment you will post the code changes, you are going to create image out of that. So your Docker file is there and this Docker file, the first stage which comes, the 
pipeline, the Jenkins pipeline will check out your microservice related repository. It will read the Docker file and doc according to the Docker file, the command what you have written in the Docker file, one image will be created. So it will be built either if you are utilizing Java, so it will, can be Maven or Gradle, or depends on your node. If it's the name or node, it will go for the NPM. So based on the kind of technology you are utilizing, it will build first and then once it is built it will push to some registry either it can be docker hub or it can be your cloud specific registry like you can think about aws ccr elastic container registry so based on your microservice code docker file will create image and it will be pushed once it is pushed in the similar way there will be separate pipeline for deployment of each and every microservice so considering 15 number of microservices are there for this particular e-commerce application now all these five uh, all these 15 microservices will be having the different ci pipeline and the different cd pipeline that means for creating the image and for deploying the image over the kubernetes cluster that means aws eks here we aws eks because we are mostly talking about the aws cloud if it's gke like your google uh, google cloud so it can be your uh, gke as well google kubernetes engine based on your cloud it can be different different kubernetes platform so once your image is created, it is pushed to the ECR and even on the ECR also we create different repository to store the images differently. Like your first microservice will be having different repository which will store all the different images. That means for microservice payment, you can say the version one of the image, the version two of the same image, version three of the image. So each and every image will be tagged with another version. So you separate all these things. In the similar way, when it comes to the deployment, it will be different mic uh, pipelines and those pipelines will deploy their uh, microservice, a specific uh, microservice, correct? Once each and everything is deployed, the ultimate purpose of all these things is that each and every thing should work all together, correct? So to make ensure or to ensure that all these things work together, what you have to do? you have to check for the dependent resources as well if my one application is dependent on another so i will have to verify i will have to rectify that the issues which are there for the first application and if it is dependent on the second so second application should also be up and live then only my first application can work so if your uh, if your database is not up correct it's considering that your database is not up or the application the microservice which is handling database related query that is not up so your login microservice will not work why it will not work the moment you will try to log in the user credentials cannot be verified which is stored in the database because your second microservice is not working so you will have to ensure that each and every microservice is working uh, consistently with each other and there is no issue in anyone so that way you can design so if we talk about like uh, complete designing so once you have deployed for the your uh, testing environment or for you can say for the staging environment then going forward once everything is tested you can go for the next level of environment like you can say the evt or the pre-production or to the production so based on your uh, manual approval like uh, when you get the customer downtime so then you can go for the production to deploy all these things what you can do you can have the helm charts helm chart is kind of package manager for the your kubernetes deployment correct so either you can go through helm charts or you can utilize customize for kubernetes deployment correct then you can create the separate values.yml files as well and through values.yml file you can pass on the different kind of configurational details to your application correct which is going to utilize all these things later on when your application will start running so that way you can do when it comes to the deployment or the upgrade, you can say, correct, like today you deployed on 1.0 or 10.0 version and tomorrow you are going to have a major uh, function release or major functionality release, correct, on 12.0. So how will you do the deployment, correct? So deployment strategy, either you can go with the rolling update strategy or you can go, the, go with the blue-green deployment or other deployment strategies are also there. So you can pick up any one of the strategies. So the tools and the kind of process when we uh, talk about the conclusion like how the CICD will be uh, integrated for your one microservice what are the all the tools you will be uh, utilizing to answer this particular question or to uh, create a visualization of the architecture you will be utilizing github or gitlab to create to uh, store your git uh, code the application code or any infrastructure related code 
then you will be utilizing CICD that means Jenkins or the GitHub action then you will be utilizing ECR for uh, register uh, for storing your uh, images the container registry then you will be utilizing docker to create the image out of this your source code then you will be docker is called as containerization tool correct once you have created the image you will have to run that and you will have to manage so container orchestration tool that means given it that will also be there in the picture ultimately your secret manager either aws secret manager or hashtag of vault you are going to utilize then at the end your monitoring solution will be in the picture so either grafana l your data dog is flung dynatrix whatever the monitoring tool you are going to utilize apm tool you can say application performance monitoring tool these tools will be utilized to do uh, to do the complete deployment process and up to the uh, monitoring system as well so it will start with like you will have a github repository for uh, each and every uh, microservice specifically then you will create a docker file you will create a jenkins file your development team or you are going to develop you will post it to the repository and it will be uh, like one of the image will be created out of that using the docker file and this image will later on be utilized to deploy on the eks cluster and then it will run and all the ports should be up and running correct so this way you can explain this particular question you can uh, like integrate you can answer this question and if you are the one who is preparing for the devops interview we are running devops interview preparation bootcamp batch 12 as well and you can do whatsapp inquiry over the number which is in the description and on the screen as well so just share and subscribe to your colleagues thank you for watching this video